Welcome to the last video of Module 2. We have now made it through two modules, count them, two modules. It's only sometime in December, maybe. I don't really know when this video is going to be. My guess is sometime before winter break. So we've made it through two whole modules in a semester. Huzzah! This should be an easy lesson because I have been preparing you for this the entire time. If you remember when I said, hey, I spent 45 minutes reviewing all of the material so I can make sure that I knew how to teach Engage New York, there's a reason. I like to throw in a little bit of extra stuff to make sure that we're building up to what they actually want, rather than just saying, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, oh, throwing something new at you. There's nothing new here. When you look at these graphs, you should be able to say, hey, Mr. H, there's a positive relationship, there's a negative relationship. I've already talked to you about correlation. There is a positive correlation here because as X increases, Y appears to be increasing. There's a negative correlation. Why? Because as X increases, Y decreases. You should be able to look at that, and there are no problems when you look at that. But what does that mean? Well, there are stronger and weaker correlations. So now let's look at these. Okay. So as I take a look at these two examples, would you say that there's positive or negative or any type of correlations happening? So as we look at these, what can we say about three? Do you think it's positive? Do you think it's negative? Well, it's kind of all over the place. It might be positive. This one, though, man, that looks really good. That's a nice positive correlation. I'm not as sure about this one. This is where we talk about strengths of correlations, okay? Because there are better linear correlations. There's stronger ones, there's weaker ones. I would say this is a weak positive correlation, where here I'd say this is a nice strong correlation. And there's going to be a way to figure out whether it's true or not, whether it's strong or not. Let's move down, okay. So we've got these three. So we've got scatter plot five, which appears to be positive, kind of. We've got scatter plot six, that definitely appears to be positive. Ah, scatter plot seven is a strong, strong candidate. It looks rock solid. It looks amazing. It's a nice almost line. This is almost a line. Mm, okay. So if I had to put these in order from strongest to weakest, definitely scatter plot seven, scatter plot six, scatter plot five. Not saying that scatter plot five isn't positive, but it just has the weakest correlation. So how can we figure that out? Well, which one here has a stronger? You know, I don't know. They're both pretty good about this one. So how are we going to figure that out? The strength of the linear relationship for these might be exactly the same. So we use what's called the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient states that R, which is what we're going to call the correlation, can be anywhere as low as negative 1 or as anywhere as high as positive 1. For strong relationships, we want a 1 or we want a negative 1. Negative correlation coefficient just tells me about the line, whether it's negative or positive. This is linear. I mean, I can draw a line through all of those points. We know exactly what the equation is which is why my correlation coefficient is positive one. That's as strong a positive correlation as possible. Here, it's 71 hundredths. I can draw a line. It's saying, okay, it's somewhat close to one, but not exactly one. So it's not perfect, but it's still pretty strong. The farther we get away from one and negative one, the weaker the correlation. Because I could put a line here, I could put a line here. I could even probably put a line here. But they're saying it's a positive correlation, so they're saying it's going up. But there's not a lot of good data there. Oh, man. Negative 0.1. This is about as far as we can get away from 1 as we want. It's negative, but it, it could be positive with an outlier. This isn't good correlation. This is weak. It's tough to say whether it's positive or negative. Oh, negative 0.32. Negative 0.63, we're getting closer and closer to being strong. Negative 1, this is linear. 1 and negative 1 are linear. So how do we find the correlations? Well, let's go to example 4. Which is our shoe lengths, which I believe I still have in my calculator. 
So I go to stat, I go to my list. I've still got my shoe lengths in there. So how do we find the correlation? Well, first off, we need to make sure that we've got everything in here correctly. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we've got everything turned on. So in your calculator, I want you to press second catalog. And then we're going to press this down arrow. And we're going to hold this down arrow for a while until we get to the D's. And we are looking for diagnostic on. When I get to diagnostic on, I'm going to press enter. I'm going to press enter and it says done. We need to make sure we do that. Because now when I go to stat and I calculate, and I'm going to go to my linear regulate, I press enter. It gives me not only my numbers, but my R value. It's saying that the correlation coefficient for the shoe sizes, as, it's, as my shoes are bigger, my height's taller, it's saying that it's about 0 0.65. 0 0.65 is closest to one. It's not a perfect one, but it's close to one. If you go to this table, which you have, it's telling me what we know. So 0 0.65, this is a moderate positive linear relationship. Not perfect, not horrible, but it's not like this. This is, a, this is perfect. It's a linear relationship. Man, there's a really strong one. And it shows me where they would fall. Now, this is important. Just because there's a strong positive or strong negative relationship, that doesn't mean that X affects Y. Okay? They've done studies that have shown there are better readers, young kids who are better readers with bigger shoe sizes. So does that mean that shoe size tells me if you're going to be a better reader? No. What that says is they show a pattern. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's exact, but it shows a pattern. So X doesn't always affect Y the way that you would think it. For shoe size, I've got a big shoe. I've got a size 12. I'm five foot seven. That doesn't really fit. Okay, so there are always reasons to say, does it affect things perfectly? No. Calories. So there's an example here that talks about food with sodium. Sodium has no calories, but the more sodium is in a food, it's saying the more calories are in the food. Well, why? Why could that be possible? Well, if you have more sodium, maybe you have more fat, maybe you have more carbs, I don't know, but there's other factors that affect it. Sodium just happens to be one that will balance out with it. So the correlation coefficient tells me how strong something is. Is it linear or not? So a correlation coefficient is going to really help me say whether, and here's what you're saying, there's not a cause and effect. I'm going to let you read this on your own. So if you want to pause, if you want to find it, there's a correlation coefficient there. But this is what I want. Linear relationships are often described in terms of strength and direction. Direction being positive, direction being negative. The correlation coefficient tells me whether it's a good linear relationship or not. The closer to positive one or negative one, the stronger it is. Listen, guys, we are done with module two. We've done a lot of linear stuff. I can't wait to move on. You have a test coming up.